Hello everyone, welcome back. So let us continue our discussion on Hamilton's principle and Lagrange equation. So now we have derived Lagrange's equation and what was that equation if you recall d dt of dou l dou q dot minus dou l dou q okay, equal to 0 and what is qk? qk is what we call generalized coordinate. Now, this equation particularly is very helpful to derive the equation of motion for a complex system where uh, we first define the generalized coordinate and in terms of that generalized coordinate, we define Lagrangian, right? So, what is Lagrangian? It is nothing but T minus V. Now, automatically the first question comes in our mind that we started this course with Newton's law and dl embodies principle, right? So, the question is, can we derive the equation above? from D. L. Lambert's principle. Now, this question is really important simply because then that will convince us that uh, yes, we, we can derive the equation of motion for the same system using D. L. Lambert's principle as well as Lagrange equation. Now, uh, if you recall D. L. Lambert's principle, then uh, what was that principle? So, summation i equal to 1 to say n or uh, let me use a different not notation m f i vector minus uh, p i dot, this is a vector is equal to 0. Right. Now, if we consider displacement field, so for the ith particle, so we have um, altogether m particles. Right. So, you can see here, so we have how many particles? We have m particles and then for ith particle, uh, if we define the displacement, that will be in terms of our physical space, it will be x i plus i hat that is the unit vector and then y i plus. So, we have three unit vectors along the three orthogonal coordinates in Cartesian framework and then um, we define the position vector for the ith particle. Now, if we consider a virtual displacement and uh, that for the ith particle will be defined by this notation. So, what will be the virtual displacement? We all can easily write that. So, it will be, so the virtual displacement of the ith uh, particle in terms of uh, generalized coordinate we can easily write. So, this will be k equal to 1 sorry this will be 1 not i 1 to n right. So, we have n generalized coordinate. So, q k k equal to 1 to n and we have m particles. So, we 
let me write using a different notation. So we have m particles. Fine. So we have defined the position vector and also we have defined the virtual displacement. So this is our virtual displacement. Now once we define the virtual displacement, you can easily sense we will talk about virtual work done. So for that what we do, we uh, multiply both sides of this equation with the virtual displacement. So what we have is i equal to 1 to m and then that is the virtual work done. Now we can open this bracket, it is very simple. So what we will have Now, uh, if you look at this right hand side, so what we have, this is the force and this is the virtual displacement. So force times displacement, we get the work done. Now if I further modify this right hand side, so what we have is we can actually write the expression for uh, this pi dot. So that will be summation i equal to 1 to m and then um, so now once we have this expression, so let us consider Let us consider the left hand side of the above equation. So what we have summation i equal to 1 to m and then we have f i dot delta ri vector and then uh, in place of delta ri we have already uh, written down the expression. So this is the expression. So what we can write is summation i equal to 1 to m f i and then summation k equal to 1 to n and then we have delta okay so what you can see now that we have two summations one over i and another over k right so what we can do we can interchange this summation so if we just rewrite k equal to 1 to n. Remember k is the index that uh, is associated with the generalized coordinate right and then what we have is summation i equal to 1 to m that is the number of particles. So what we have is f i then we have that is the expression. Out of this, if I just put a 
bracket that will help us to understand. So, what we have on the left hand side? We have force times virtual displacement. That means force times displacement which gives us the amount of work. Now, if you look at this quantity, so what we have here is also, so this is the generalized coordinate. So, it is basically the virtual displacement in terms of generalized coordinates, right. So, if I write virtual displacement in terms of generalized coordinate. So, that is associated with some kind of displacement and then if we get the work done because on the left hand side we have the work done. So, what is this quantity within the third bracket? It has to be some kind of force and because it changes with k, so we call it some force. So, normally we note it qk and qk is what? qk we call it generalized force because it is in the generalized coordinate. Right. So, what we have here is the expression for qk. So, what we have qk is equal to summation i equal to 1 to m because it is over i then fi times dou r i vector divided by dou qk. Okay, let me just uh, erase this. Now, we can further expand this because if you look at the definition of the position vector ri we have already defined and then uh, for a conservative system we know how this force is actually related to the potential. So, for a conservative system, for a conservative system, we can conclude that this uh, fi will be what? minus of this uh, delta operator over uh, the potential. Now, if that is the case, so what we can write in this expression, so what we have i equal to 1 to m and in place of f i, now uh, we can modify this. So, what is that expression? It will be So, this operator over V, so, right. So, this over V and then uh, we have uh, the remaining part. Remaining part is what? We have the first differential of position vector with respect to the generalized coordinate. So, in place of uh, Ri, we can write x i i hat then y i j hat plus z i j hat. Right. Now, if we take this v inside, so what we have is actually um, v here and then we have this dot product. Now, if we do that, what we have is uh, minus 
i equal to 1 to m then uh, what we have is uh, the dot product between two vectors so we have Right, so that's the final expression we get. Now, if you look at this expression, we can definitely simplify this because effectively we have this is minus dou v dou qk. So finally, what we get qk that is the generalized force is basically the partial derivative of this strain energy with respect to qk that is the generalized coordinate. Now, if you look at this expression and look at this expression, both of them are consistent simply because in the physical space, this force actually is uh, related to the potential and here in the generalized coordinate also, we can see the same uh, relation right so that's a very important conclusion now up to this point what we have done is uh, the left hand side of this equation that we derived from the d lambert's principle so we start again uh, with d lambert's principle then uh, i mean quantify the virtual work and then uh, the left hand side of the equation we um, simplified and we get this uh, expression right so now what we'll do we will um, let us just write down the left hand side of the therefore left hand side is summation i equal to 1 to m then we have f i delta r i this is equal to summation k equal to 1 to n we have q k and then delta small q k. Now, if we write down the expression of q k, so this will be summation i equal to 1 to m in place of qk we have this expression times delta q. So that is the expression we get for the left hand side. Now what we will do we will consider the right hand side and we will derive the expression further. So let us consider right hand side of the equation. Let me just uh, put an equation number. So, what we have is, uh, so this equation is equation 1. So, LHS of equation 1 and then uh, we have uh, the right hand side of equation 1. Now what is the right hand side? So right hand side is again summation i equal to 1 to m then we have pi dot delta all right right 
Now, we can expand pi dot. So, what we have is i ranging from 1 to m and in place of pi, we can write m i. I put a bar here just to differentiate uh, from the uh, number of particle that is m. Okay. So, then m i and then we have r double dot and then uh, delta r i. Okay. So, that is the expression. Now, we have already derived the expression for this virtual displacement and uh, let us focus on the term r i double dot. So, uh, if we further expand this expression i equal to 1 to m and then m i then r i double dot and then in place of the virtual displacement what we have is summation um, k equal to 1 to n and then delta or do r i do q k times delta q k. There will be a vector notation. Okay. So, up to this point is uh, fine. We can then put a third bracket here. Okay, so now again what you have here is uh, two summations, one over i, another over k. So, we can uh, interchange if we just take this summation over k outside. So, summation i equal to 1 to m and then m i bar times r i double dot. And then what we have is uh, right. So, again I repeat what we have done is we interchange the summation and then we get this expression. Now, now if we focus at this r i double dot m i bar times r i double dot then times uh, do r i do q k. This quantity we can actually uh, simplify it further that we will do in a minute. For that let us consider this quantity. Right. So, if I expand this quantity, how do you get this? Actually, I have as I told you at the beginning, r i double dot uh, times m i bar and then times do r i do q k. So, we consider this quantity and then if we apply the first differential with respect to t. So, what we will get? We will have m i times r i double dot then then plus m i bar times this time we have to differentiate the next term. So, we have d dt do r i So, this means m i bar r i double dot times do r i do q k is equal to what? Is equal to d d t of this third bracketed quantity. I am not writing. So, this is the quantity 
and then minus mi ri dot times d dt do ri do q q. And that's the expression we are going to put here. So what we have is summation k equal to 1 to n and within third bracket we will write d dt of mi bar ri dot do ri do q k minus mi then ri d dt of do ri do q k. So, I have to put a second bracket here and then a third bracket here and then delta. Okay. Now, what we can do? We can open the bracket. So, we will take k equal to 1 to n and then we will take this d dt inside. So, what we will have is mi bar. So, what we have here is uh, d dt and then this second bracketed term we can actually modify if you look at first we have uh, this do ri do q k is equal to what we can write down this as do ri dot do q k dot how simply because we differentiate um, numerator and denominator with respect to time. So, what we can first do, we can modify this expression within the third bracket in place of this, uh, we can write this quantity and then uh, we can rewrite the expression in a slightly modified form. So, what we have is half m r i Right. So, this is the first term and then minus again here also we can modify if you look at. So, first what we can do we have this d dt operating over do ri do q k. So, what we can do we can interchange this uh, differential operators. So, we can take this uh, do do q k out and then do d dt over ri first. So, you can easily do because these two uh, operators do not affect each other. One is with respect to q k that is the partial differential and another is with respect to t. So, we can modify this expression. Now, if you do that, what we have uh, this expression is uh, the first differential. So, uh, what we can do uh, d dt of r i is equal to is equal to r i dot right. So, uh, if that is the case and then uh, I think I have missed one dot here. So, there is a dot here as you can see it is there. So, we have again uh, this expression which we can further modify. So, we have do do q k then half m r i dot times r i dot. 
times double click it. Right. So you are almost there. So what we have in this uh, second bracketed term is t, right? So t is equal to half m r i dot times r i dot, right? So if that is the case we can modify this expression what we have here is summation i equal to 1 to n then within third bracket we have d dt do do q k of t minus do do q k again of t times delta Right. Now, if you look at this expression, we have kinetic energy that have appeared in this expression. Now, if we modify this expression in terms of Lagrangian, so what we have L is equal to T, which is a function of there will be a dot here, I have missed it. So, function of qk and qk dot and minus v which is a function of qk. So, if that is the case, then uh, what we can write is uh, this expression. Uh, we can further modify because if we differentiate v uh, with respect to q k dot. So, if I differentiate v with respect to q k dot, so this will be equal to 0. So, what we have here is i equal to 1 to n, then d d t do do q k dot. In place of t, now I can write l simply because the first term will be as is what we have in the equation and the second term uh, in this Lagrangian will be V if we differentiate that with respect to QK dot that will vanish minus do do Q K of T delta Q. Okay. So, we have derived the right hand side also and we have derived the left hand side. So, now if we equate these two what we will get is, um, so the left hand side is summation k equal to 1 to m then minus do v do q k times delta q k. So, that is the left hand side and right hand side is what we have just derived is that summation k equal to 1 to m within bracket d dt then dou q k dot l minus dou, dou q k of t delta. Now, if we equate these two, what we get? If we just modify this expression, we have on the left hand side, we have summation k equal to 1 to n minus dou v dou q k delta q k is equal to this quantity. Okay. So, that is the equation we get. Now, if we modify this equation, what we have? If we take this left hand side on the right hand side and then simplify, so what we have k equal to 1 to m d dt times dou l dou q k dot minus we have dou dou q k t and then there is a minus here 
if we take it on the right hand side it will be plus so if we take them within a bracket so it will be minus again and then times delta k is equal to 0 and then again what we can modify is that in place of t minus v we can write l right now obviously what we have is this equation so let me write say so this equation is second um, delta q k not equal to 0 simply because this is the virtual displacement in the generalized coordinate and then obviously that implies that d dt times dou l dou uk dot minus dou l dou uk must be equal to 0 and this is again the equation that we have already derived and this is the Lagrange equation. So what we see is that we start with the D'Alembert's principle and then we take the help of virtual work and then using these two we have derived the Lagrange equation that we very often use to derive the equation of motion of a dynamical system. Now to derive this equation we actually adopted two different paths. First we started with the Hamilton's principle then we use the concept of variational calculus and derive this equation. Today uh, we did not use actually the concept of uh, calculus of variation, but we use the vector representation of the physical space as well as the generalized coordinate and then using virtual work done, we have derived the same equation of motion. Now that actually convinced us that the system we deal with, if we adopt the path of D'Alembert's principle, we get a set of equations and if we follow the Lagrange equation, we will also get the same set of equations because they are actually interconnected and we have already derived this using two different approach. I repeat once more, today we have used virtual work done, but in the previous lecture, we derived the same quantity using optimization of action integral. So, it actually proves two things in a single shot that uh, the force equilibrium we talk about in terms of uh, Newton's second law or uh, this D'Alembert's principle is actually embedded in this equation. Not only that, the solution of this equation gives us the path for this um, system of particles that actually optimizes the action integral. So these are the two most important uh, features that we have discussed in the two classes. And then uh, further what we will do, we will explore some system and we will derive the equation of motion using this uh, Lagrange equation and also then further we will investigate what we mean by Hamiltonian and then uh, the canonical form of the Hamilton's equation. So that we will do in the next class. Let us uh, conclude today. I hope uh, this derivation is clear to you. So you go through it. If you have any uh, difficulty, do let us know in the open session. Uh, we will try to clear your doubt. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.